Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Greg Michalowski from ForexLive.com. This is the weekend report for the week starting September 4th, 2022. I'm going to go through some fundamental views that I might have and also take a look at the technicals after that because that helps define the risk and limit your risk and also define the bias of the currency pairs going forward. So sit tight, get comfortable, have your cup of coffee. Let's get going. Before I get started, I uh, posted a short video, relatively short video, uh, one of my educational videos on the fear of success. Most people, most traders know about the fear of failure, but they don't know about the fear of success that we have when we trade. So if you're interested in that topic, and I think you should be, take a look at the video. You can find it here on our website. So the U.S. jobs report came in with a gain of about three not about, at 315,000 versus uh, 300,000 expected. However, there was a minus 108,000 revision to the prior month. The unemployment rate moved higher to 3.7% from 3.5% as a result of an influx of new workers re-entering into the job market. So the participation rate moved higher. One can hypothesize that the negative wealth effect from higher inflation, softer housing, higher rents, lower stock markets, uh, may have made uh, retirement premature for some workers that were on the bubble or on the margin, and they're forced to re-enter the labor market as a result. Nevertheless, the initial reaction was a softening of the dollar after the uh, runs higher early in the week, saw the uh, euro versus U.S. dollar move to test the lows for the year and the lowest level since 2002. The pound versus U.S. dollar continued to chip toward its uh, 2020 pandemic low. The dollar versus yen did extend to yet other new highs uh, going back to 1998. The New Zealand versus U.S. dollar tested its lowest level since May 2017. And the dollar versus Canada tested its high for the year and highest level since November 2020. Later in the day on Friday, the news of Russia closing the Nord Stream 1 pipeline completely sent shivers down the spines of uh, traders and into the for financial markets. Stocks moved lower, the U.S. dollar reversed back to the upside, and yields moved lower as well. The major U.S. stock indices closed lower for the third consecutive week in a row. The Nasdaq added to its woes from the Powell Jackson Hole speech and fell each of the five trading days last week. The Dow and S&P did eke out small gains on Thursday, but they reversed lower on Friday and were down four of the five trading weeks for the week. For the week, the Dow fell minus 2.97%. The S&P index fell minus 3.29%, and the Nasdaq fell minus 4.21%. European indices were mixed. The German DAX, after gaining 3.9% on Friday, closed higher by 0.61%. However, France's CAC fell minus 1.7%, UK's FTSE 100 fell minus 1.97%, and the Spain's IBEX fell 1.6%. In the U.S. debt market, yields did tumble on Friday, but not before the two-year did extend to the highest level since November 2007 on Thursday. The sharp fall on Friday of minus 11.5 basis points in the two-year did take the yield down minus 1.4 basis points on the week. It was the only part of the yield curve which saw declines as the two-year was where the Fed tightening has been priced in the most. The rest of the yield curve moved higher as investors steepened the yield curve with expectations of higher rates for longer by the Fed. The five years moved up to 3.296%. That was up 8.8 .8 basis points on the week. The 10-year moved up to 3.193%, up 15 basis points. Uh, it is up 68 basis points from early August. The 30-year moved up to 3.35%, up 15.7 basis points for its week. The 2 uh, versus 10-year spread remains inverted at minus 20 basis points, but it was as, as inverted as minus 51.4 basis points in early August. So there has been some steepening of that yield curve, but still remains negative. Higher yields in the longer end will likely lead to higher mortgage rates and continue to soften the demand side of the equation. Although it hasn't been 2000 2008 with a flip mania and over leveraging, the wealth effect from housing gave people comfort to leave the workforce. As mentioned earlier, that dynamic is seeing a reversal, at least for those on the margin, with the influx of new workers into the workforce this month. The benchmark 10-year yields in uh, Europe also moved higher. The German 10-year 
moved up to 1.508%. That was up 10.5 basis points, and it's up 83 basis points since early August. France moved up to 2.135%. That's up 10.1 basis points on the week and 89 basis points from early August. UK moved up to 2.901%. That's up 28.4 basis points this week and 119 basis points from the beginning of August. Finally, Japan 10-year yield moved up for the fourth week in a row, but only by 2.1 basis points. And at 0.237%, it's well below comparable rates in Europe and the U.S. In the Forex, the U.S. dollar continued its move to the upside. The euro versus U.S. dollar closed marginally lower by minus 6.8 basis points, or or 0.07% gain for the U.S. Uh, dollar. A hike of 75 basis points at the ECB meeting on Thursday is getting more traction and that seems to have slowed the decline in the euro versus U.S. dollar a bit or at least stabilized the pair around the parity level. The pound versus U.S. dollar fell by minus 233 pips. That is an increase of 1.99% for the U.S. dollar. The dollar versus yen uh, rose by 269 pips. That is the equivalent of 1.96% rise in the U.S. dollar last week. Dollar Swiss rose 147 pips, 1.52% for the dollar. U.S. dollar Canada rose by 89 pips, 0.68% dollar gain. And the Aussie versus U.S. dollar fell by 80 pips, or a minus one point or a plus 1.16 percent for the U.S. dollar. Fed officials this week reiterated the Fed chair's position outlined at Jackson Hole. The expectations for 75 basis points at the September meeting remains the odds-on favorite for the Fed. Now, with all that said, the biggest stories will not necessarily be the Fed, but the continued issues with Russia and China. The Nord Stream pipeline shenanigans by the Russians is something they can do in perpetuity. Retaliation by the G7, as outlined by Adam in his weekend post, you can find on ForexLive.com, is a scary scenario. Read that post. You can find it here. China and Taiwan is another troubling scenario that threatens stability, flow of goods, and may just be the tip of an iceberg if there is an escalation. The ingredients that are going to the witch's cauldron are varied and many. The central bank's piece catches a lot of attention, but there is no love lost between the U.S., EU, and Russia and China. The war is being played out mostly economically, although in Ukraine it is a different story. Nevertheless, the apple cart is not very steady. Charts and technical analysis are a reflection of all the ingredients that go into this fundamental cauldron. That concoction changes in real time, but the price action and tools give the bias and also defines the risk in the short and long term. I will now go through the major currencies versus the US dollar and define the bias and the risks. So sit tight, let's get into part two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Greg Michalowski with the second part of the weekend Forex uh, week in advance look for the week of September 4th. In this uh, this uh, section, I'm going to take a look at the technicals that are driving the currency markets. What are the biases? What are some of the risks? What are some of the targets? Things like that. Uh, we'll start off by taking a look at the euro versus U.S. dollar. This is the daily chart. And what is um, interesting here is that remember this uh, range over here where the market stayed in this uh, consolidated range for about 17 or 18 trading days. Well, we're starting to make another range down here. This range was about 197 pips. This is about 191 pips. This is 11 days. This is, like I said, 18 days or thereabouts. So um, somewhat um, symmetrical, if you will. Lots of up and down price action. Uh, this time around the parity level for the euro versus US dollar. The current price is trading below that level at 99.50. You know, around the 9955 level is where we uh, closed out in the middle of the um, bid offer spread on that day. So um, uh, we are near the lower end at, and we are below the parity level as well, which, um, you know, for, I don't know if about, about for you, but for me, a parity level kind of s- seems like a, the middle of a seesaw. Trade above, it's more bullish. Trade below, it's more bearish type of thing. But as you can see, uh, the market has been trading above and below it all. Uh, during this uh, period right, right here as uh, traders try to figure out which way the next shove is going to be. Um, is the shove uh, going to be below the 99 level or are we going to move back above and into this old uh, swing area right here which uh, covered from uh, par 96 up to 
1.0121 if you recall so if we uh, get above that level we're ba back above the lower extreme area of uh, th that uh, triangle over here so uh, you know it's it's it is what it is we're um, we're trading up and down um, let's see what the hourly chart tells us on the hourly chart um, lots of uh, ups and downs and you would expect uh, that the range here would have the 100 and 200 hour moving averages in between it and indeed it does the uh, uh, 200 hour moving average comes in at 98 99.85 the 100 comes in right above the parity level so uh, that's a nice confirmation of bullish above or bearish below in friday's trade we saw uh, the, you know, this is the unemployment day. We saw the price uh, initially move uh, to the, uh, or we saw the price move down and uh, dip below the 200 hour moving average. And then we found uh, buyers through here as the, uh, we saw dollar selling after the employment report. And then we had the Russian news and uh, down goes uh, Frazier uh, below the 100 hour moving average, 200 hour moving average. And uh, to this uh, uh, 99, uh, 50, 51.5 level, uh, that level um, actually corresponds with the swing low from July 15th right through here and uh, actually July 14th uh, the uh, price uh, moved below it here here and we're closing like I said just around that level so that might be a short-term barometer ahead of the uh, parity uh, level up here in the 100 hour moving average stay below the um, if the price can stay below the 99 51.5 level that would be more bearish to look down toward our lows speaking of the lows from last week um, the uh, lows uh, came in in this um, area ahead of the ultimate low here near the uh, 99 level uh, this area here between I guess it's 99.06 or something to 99.13 um, has uh, seen uh, swing lows swing lows lots of swing lows through here you can see all the swing lows in this this area right here so that would be another level to get through before the before we get break below the 99 level so that's a detailed look at the euro versus us dollar let's take a look at the dollar versus yen and uh, this uh this high right here is the highest level um since well since my chart goes back it goes it actually goes back to 1998 this high right here and as you can see the price moved up uh toward the underside of this broken trend line this trend line connects Lows going back to um, March of 2002 and to May of 2002. Broke below it here on our way down to test the 100 day moving average in the month of August right here and find willing buyers. That was a great um, buy location and a great bounce and gave the buyers uh, more confidence for a further move to the upside. The initial move to the upside did come down to test this um, swing low through here after the reaching the high here. That was a nice little test there. The market came back down and retested this swing area through here. Um, well, got close to it, I guess. It wasn't, you know, I like to say sniffed it. So there was some sort of smell in the distance and uh, and it found some uh, buyers, buyers early against that level. And you can see a number of days to the upside here couple days of correction here with a, a up day and then uh, the last week we saw uh, prices move higher pretty much every every uh, day maybe a little dip on this day right here on Wednesday so um, uh, the buyer, buyers remain in control we did move up to, to the underside of the broken trend line here this is again in no man's land this is 1998 high prices through here so we did find uh, some sellers I guess near that uh, top side trend line uh, or the underside of the of that broken trend line and a move above it would just open the door for further upside for the uh, dollar versus yen. Let's take a look at the hourly chart to see what it's telling us. And you can see the high price here. Also, um, I just put it in a parallel line to this line through here, uh, connecting the high right here. So there really isn't two points on this line here uh, to say so, uh, or to to say that it's a, a trend line, but it is a, a channel trend line. Uh, the uh, high price that we saw on Friday's uh, trade did stall ahead of that level before moving back to the downside in the Russian news and uh, came down to sort of uh, hold support against this trend line th right through here and um, also swing lows through here. So this area right here is, you know, a support level also as well as the trend line. So we're close just above the trend line, which comes in around the 140.13 level, as it says right there. So if we break below that level uh, in the early trading this week, again, this is the hourly chart, so it's moving higher as we go along. Uh, it would it would give a little bit of a sh short some hope, but there's plenty of work to do, like the getting below the 38.2% retracement, getting below the 50% and getting below the 100 hour moving average. 
All those uh, are uh, targets on the downside that would need to be ha need to happen. And then we start to look at this yellow area through here. We had a swing high, swing high, swing high, swing high, swing highs, swing highs, swing lows, uh, swing highs. So this area right here between 136.87 and 99. And then we have the 200 hour moving average through here. Um, it doesn't take a genius to uh, realize that the trend is to the upside here. And as you uh, start to correct, if you have a correction lower, if you want to sell, you need to see the price um, get through a lot of levels on the way back to the downside, including the 100, the you know the, just the retracement levels of this move to the upside and the 200 hour moving average. Uh, recall going back to this day right here, the price tested the 200 hour moving average and bounced off of that level. So we really haven't been below the 200 hour moving average for quite some time in this currency pair. Need to get below that uh, level in order to push, give the sellers some more confidence. But as you can see, there are other levels to get to and through if we um, going to start that process starting with this trend line right here and moving its way down through the uh, progression that we just went through let's take a look at the sterling versus us dollar start with the weekly chart here because uh need to go back to uh, the march pandemic lows through here to see where we where we stand right now and the uh, march pandemic lows uh, came down uh, between 114.08 I've said it was 03, but it's really 08. 114.45 is this other swing low through here. This is, again, the weekly chart. So these are weekly lows through here. And the price uh, last week moved down to a low near 114.95. 114.95. And um, we're closing, we closed um, just above the, uh, or above the 115 level, let's say midpoint 115.10 uh, from the uh, wide Friday close. So, so this is what it looks like on the um, hourly chart. Um, we we uh, we uh, tried to make a low on Thursday, and uh, then we uh, moved above this trend line. We sort of sideways our way through the trend line ahead of the um, the data, the unemployment data on Friday, uh, but uh, we could not uh, sustain you know, lots of choppy action here through the. Um, employment report, as you can see, um, ups and downs, and then uh, the Russian news uh, sent the pipeline news sent the price down back to test the underside of the broken trend line and also the low price again the lowest price since uh, March of 2020 so we're, we're closing near this low level what would give the the buyers more uh, hope um, well getting above the pie from Friday maybe getting above this uh, this low from Wednesday's trade which we couldn't do on Friday getting above the 100 hour moving average getting above the 30 well, actually, let's put a Fibonacci here from uh, from this hot. Well, I, I do have it in there. It's a 38.2% retracement of this move to the downside. I couldn't see it because the trend line's right on top of it. Um, so uh, all those things need to be broken in order to give the buyers more hope. Here, um, if if you were going to you know put a put a bid in the market, it would literally be against the low here. Uh, with a stop below that low because if we go below that level, then we're going to a new low to 2020. Uh, 2020 so there's no real reason to get in the market except the price may be oversold on the five minute chart even even that is away from that 100 and the 200 bar moving average in the five minute chart I don't want to go that far but so sellers are in control in the sterling versus US dollar as well let's take a look at the uh, dollar versus a Swiss franc next on the daily chart we moved up to um, toward closer to uh, again. This is a daily chart. The uh, the swing area through here between 98.71 and 98.908. Um, we had uh, swing high, swing high, swing low, a little bit below swing high. We switched the bias to the downside here. They came back up and switched the bias to the upside here, and then switched the bias to the downside. And then uh, in the month of uh, July, we came up into that area found seller so that area this area right here is going to be the next uh, target for the dollar versus swiss on the daily chart on the hourly chart this is what it uh, looks like um, plenty of up and down price action in fact you know almost a lap to the upside here lap to the downside here um, moving uh, further up here uh, had a double top uh, near the highs at 98.60 through here that kept the lid on the pair and moved down uh, with the uh, russian news and then sort of bounced up into the close close here toward the Swing highs uh, from Wednesday's trade and uh, some swing highs from Thursday's trade as well, uh, closing just below that level um, at uh, 98.08. Oh, 
currently trading around the 98 level on the downside. What I see here is this uh, trend line here in the rising 100 hour moving average coming at 97.63.8. Both of these, these are going to be moving to the upside as we start the trading week. So uh, this uh, this area right here, or this uh, these technical uh, tools will uh, help determine the short term bias, whether we uh, remain to the upside, the bias to the upside, or or see some more corrective move to the downside where we uh, potentially could test the rising 200 hour moving average. That's the green line through here. Ultimately, we need to get below and stay below the 200 hour moving average. We tried to get it below through it here. I think this was a PCE day and the, yeah, it's a PCE day and then the bounce back high, higher uh, off of um, Powell's, uh, Powell's uh, comments at Jackson Hole. So we saw saw the price initially move below that uh, 200 hour moving average but did not stay below that level it's going to have to stay below the level in order to keep the bias more to the downside the dollar, dollar versus canada uh, we did move up to test the uh, high for the year and highest level i think going back to 2020 that uh, comes in at 132.22 and the high price came in at 132.07 so sniffed it got within 15 pips of it bounced back to the downside in the process to the upside we did break above this top side trend line uh, which uh, had uh, spots here 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 went a, li a little well went above it here but then uh, tried to reestablish it level here and we did sort of the same thing here moved above it uh, saw momentum uh, fade up here and then came down below it and uh, on trade on Friday and uh, tried to uh, tried to move above it, couldn't, and uh, started to rotate back to the downside. This swing area, swing high, swing high, swing high, swing high, break above, come back down, um, swing high. But we came down and tested it on Friday and uh, held the level at 130.74, 130.83 is that area. We're going to have to get below that level to give the sellers more confidence uh, to the downside. Here, after uh, the uh, run to the upside, this is what it looks like on the hourly chart I'm actually going to put it on the four hour chart here for this uh, pair because I want to outline this swing area through here swing high swing high swing high swing high swing low swing low all these levels come uh, come come here and on Friday the low price moved just below that level and started to bounce back to the upside if I were to put another swing area it's right around the 130 130 uh, 31 to 39 level uh, also we had this uh, trend line which we did break below the level level it looks a little better a little less steeper on the hourly chart that's what it looks like here uh, and into our swing area here the uh, 100 hour moving average in this and this old trend line is sort of tracking each other at 13103 so if we move below 13103 that's uh that would give the sellers some more confidence but then get below the 76 level to 92 level would increase that seller's um, confidence let's take a look at the aussie uh, versus us dollar in this uh, currency pair on the weekly chart um Last month came up, tested the 200 week moving average, moved down uh, below this uh, swing area through here and then back down uh, this week to test the 50% of the range since 2019 low to the 2021 high. That level comes in at 67.56. The low price last reach last week reached 67.70. So got within 14 pips of the 50% retracement. We also uh, tested it through here. I think the lows uh, came in around the 60 63 level through here and we did break below it on this week right here came down tested this swing area here before moving to the upside so needless to say the 50 percent retracement at uh, 6756 will be a key target on the downside to get to and through on the hourly chart um uh here's a 56 level that we need to get to and through on the um uh for for the weekly chart but uh, this uh, swing area through here, you can see all the diff different swing lows and sort of chopped around it through here. But on Friday, the price came up into uh, and uh, tested it. Also tested the falling 100 hour moving average, moved a little bit above it, felt, found resistance against the swing area, and then backed off into the uh, close um, on the Russian news. Uh, this uh, 67.92 level was a swing low from Thursday's trade, and we chopped around it here on Thursday and Friday, but came down sort of toward it, uh, toward it at the lows on Friday, and uh, need to get below that level, get below that level, and then get below the 56 level to increase the bearish bias. On the top side, need to get above the 100-hour moving average. Finally, take a look at the New Zealand versus U.S. dollar, and uh, we did dip below the uh, swing low that we saw. This is the weekly chart from July uh, here yesterday or on, on trading last week uh, 6050 um, was the low price here and we are also on the weekly chart below this swing area where swing swing lows swing lows swing highs uh, base and swing and move to the upside and takes a couple couple um, 
well, years or lots of months to get back down. This is a weekly chart again to retest it in uh, 2022. Uh, we've had some uh, obviously some moves below it, and uh, this week we stayed below that area. So ultimately, we're going to need to get above the uh, 6212 level, the 0 0.6212 level to give the give the bias uh, more of a positive uh, spin spin for that. That's way up here, or 6212 is right through here. But uh, in the interim on the hourly chart, uh, getting above the 200 hour moving average is a close, close target to get to and through the 200 hour moving average. And the 50% of this move is now converged here at the uh, 0 0.615498, let's call it 50, and uh, moving lower. Uh, the um, last times the price came up to test the 200 hour moving average, we found sellers, sellers, sellers against that level. So we need to get above the 200 hour moving average to give the bias more of a push toward that 62 12 level that we talked about off the uh, weekly chart so um, uh, other than that uh, stay below the 100 hour moving average keeps the sellers in control we did find support against this lower trend line on a number number of occasions on both Thursday and Friday so that's good news that there is some some dip buying there and also some buying off of the um, weekly chart as well again at um, get against the prior prior low here but the um, so uh, watch that uh, level on the downside for the New Zealand versus U.S. dollars. So that takes a look at all the major currency pairs um, from a technical perspective. It combined with the fundamental views. Um, it's going to drive your trading this week and uh, give you potential for some um, uh, profits in your trading. Pay attention to ForexLive.com. We'll be doing videos as well during this week. So watch those. My name is Greg Wankolowski. Good fortune with your trading. Bye-bye now.